Rasmus top as he is pretty far forward. They look like they're expecting it though. Rasmus already drove the line to counter gank, but he might die before they Yeah, make the it. three of them should be able to kill him quick enough. Unless Rasmus could do something inside it. As, uh, he's gonna t Oh no! Oh, he did try! He did try, bless him, he tried the black hole. Uh -oh. oh no! That's, uh, that's that goal for 200 seconds. Down bottom there, but he trap Ace. Ace will get the rope drop onto, onto Hammer. As Ace will try and run with the sound of these Eclipse will do it. They take him out. There we go. They're going to be able to look to get Tofu here as well. Pulled back into the spear. Creep Wave coming in with some big hits. A nice swing too, how fast that movement was. Top and then the immediately forward bottom to set up with the mark. Yeah. Very nicely done and faster than... You know, Rasmus was calling for it. He drew the lines for his teammates to come, but it was a faster move than he expected. Oh, we'll see yeah. him again. Just commit for the book. Three. I mean, you, you, yeah. you knew he was going to be looking for this Rasmus, the opportunity to turn a black hole, but happening to, to do it, sort of the same frame that the boundless strike was coming down on him. So unfortunate that. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Now they can get some tower Radiant damage. Another tower pressure here, too, with the Meteor Hammer available. They're going to drop it on this one. That's two towers now claimed for them. A great start. As Crystal is this guy, this game, he's not countered. Like the last game, he was the Radiant first time he and he was fully addressed in the lanes and fully addressed in the entire draft. This game, he actually has a pretty, pretty decent matchup. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, it's, it, it's like night and day, really, the comparison between game one and game two here for, for Creep Wave. 11 minutes in, they're at a 2k lead. All three, they're causing it in a, a, a fine place to be right now. Radiant's bottom tower. Oh, this is game, under they attack. have uh, an absolute shot of taking down Hellbird Smasher. Crystal's actually almost have has his agony. It's quick. It's 11 minutes. Yeah. It's very quick. And now Murano ulting too. They're looking to continue invading. And this passive draft from Hellbird Smashers is going to take some time. He says he build up, and they're really doing a good job of taking advantage of that. Hellbird Smasher trying to clear out their jungle here. He gets a ward down. Tom Thomas trying to start something. It's Rasmus also coming Everybody in with the side, Alex. He's yeah, been ruptured. He'll try and TP out, but Ace is ever close and taken down. Also, Fishman found by Tofu and Gilga. Quickly clear out their jungle without even having to commit anything too big. Just the death ward, probably the biggest. Death ward and what, rupture? Yeah. Nice little defense from them. All postured around the area. And Ace will still get a good timing on his Maelstrom. So it's not like he's too far behind this Monkey King. But yeah, just night and day Double difference damage. for Crystal's game. I mean, and, and as you say, you know, how best smashes with their lineup, they, you know, they, this sort of passive play, is, is that something that's necessarily too scary for Creep Wave? I mean, Creep Wave's lineup the, themselves, they, they, they can also do the farming game, can't they? They absolutely can. The only fear, though, is that you're versus this Nagasar and Enigma, and these two okay. can dictate where the fight is taken. That's always the scary thing. When, like, they have Wukongs and Marzal, which is like, we always determine the fight, but then a Nagasan comes in, you wait the duration. You know, they can they can counter gank pretty nicely on the side of Hellbear Smashers versus a lot of that. And it's when those big, those one big items come out, right? Like the Orchid on the Storm, the Meteor Hammer on the Nagasar, and then that Book 3 on the Enigma. Nice gank though, creep wave kicking up that pace. Now they're taking advantage of anything. These sort of heroes out low. Rasmus does have the, the black hole ready to go again, but you know, as we saw, I mean, just overall as well, until he has those the sort of core defensive items on Enigma, it's, it's not an easy game for him to drop black holes. No. Lots of ways to put a stop to it. And uh, there, there we go. So 13 minutes and 17 seconds, uh, one minute and a half faster than the patch fastest. So. Wow. Th that is a considerable amount faster than the fastest there. Oh, nearly a minute and a half uh, here by Chrysalis, so some excellent time. And he's going to be able to farm really hard. They're going to be using this Moonlight Shadow to pressure, and it's right before the storm, I believe, has Orchid. It's coming out on the Courier. I don't believe they have Book 3 either. It's, yeah, use the Book 2, so Book 3 has 30 seconds. This is a perfect timing for them to actually invade. I believe that's an illusion, though. I believe it is. Uh, they'll soon find that out. And now the song, it's in place. Over to the side, Stormstorm is able to take down Fishman. Well, this song, Gilga can buy time for to close it on Yodi. And Rasmus will drop the black hole. Make sure that there's no counterplay from Maori. 
And uh, there's a, but this is what you're sort of talking about there. Just through the song, the black hole set up. They're, they're going to be able to do this to, to isolate and find the cause regardless of how much farm they have at, at any point of the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's real tough. It's, I mean, they caught an illusion. You know, they put the ward and they were smoked and it broke, but there was actually the real hero just down south. It was unfortunate for Malreen. Now that, that item is out, the Orchid is finished with the storm, but they still do have time to... They do have uh, an opportunity to make an aggressive move. I think they should look for it, too. No song, no black hole. Go with Amara this time. Bring the Mars. Where's the party? Well, mid lane. They're looking to make the move on the Orchid King already. Uh, he needs help. He needs it soon. He is going to get it. And Maureen comes with with the Astral to buy him some safety. Chrysalis will turn and the backups arrive. They'll in take down Tofu. Should we bury you, and they get more. <laughs> Mar wants to get this ult off. He's level 12 now too with a full Vlad spin. So he's also very far. Oh, he's got that Mar. Set up. Let's see how much kills are around Smith. Dark for this is Alex will go down. The arena's out from Mamar as he will trap and take down Rasmus in return. Very nicely done. Getting a, they're getting a lot out of the map with these moves. And Crystal is just keeping that top net worth too. Ace is keeping pretty consistent with his farm. But a very close, yeah, very close game so far here. And it's gonna be a lot about these big ultimates who, who dictates the fights and who's able to reset and counter initiate properly. It's gotta take advantage of those long cooldowns. So it's still hundred seconds on the black hole. So I feel like you can still can look to take these these engagements. Right now it's a little scary because as I, Amara's ult is still down, but they can say posture down here. And they are going to be building what I hope is just the BKBs right afterwards, because an interaction that we did find out that is 100% confirmed is, is you can BKB during the black hole and out of the Naga sleep. So as soon as the sleep goes off, even if you're black hole before the sleep comes off, you can pop BKB. So that'll be very useful. <laughs> Under when they do get those, Storm, Storm, and Tofu find a quick kill. Huzzah! Imagine is that nowadays the same then for uh, sleep into Agnim's static storm? I, I would imagine Radiant so. I didn't test that one actually. I'll test that one after this game, but I tested it with a, a lot of the other ones, and you can like, I was getting arrow oh, and stuff. Uh, like that I was getting video. some weird. Weird interactions. I always got Dyer's the BKB off. Oh yeah, I mean the arrow ones have a. Well, yeah, you get the Dyer's BKB off, but you're still stunned, right? It, when you're it was that forward. one was actually 50/50. I couldn't okay. get that one to <laughs> happen every time. It was really weird. A bit of the old RNG. Maureen attempting to meteor hammer bottom gets a little scared by those illusions, and now Naga Sirens meteor hammer is online, and Black Bolt is going to be available. This is where Hellblower Smash is very strong in this next upcoming fight. Dyer's See how Creepy wants to attack. set themselves up for if they even want to take the fight. What if they do? They're sending Crystals up top. Oh, Miss Tower is going down very fast, sir. To, to this, I don't think they to can the the Necro, but Dyer's top no, they're smoking. They might catch them on the retreat here, but they don't have their OD for the moment. He's going to start keeping over. And there is a song and a Black Hole. Oh, they push off the heal, they get the stars under a mark. Tofu, Maladic down on Fishman, Fishman will throw out the Chain Frost, but they're able to split immediately. Keeps the bounce, is incredibly limited, and now the song's in play. They want to fight here. Gilga is going to turn, try for the Meteor Hammer, but Chrysalis is able to reach him from the side. Cancel the channeling there with the Boundless Strike. Aria will be dropped down onto Gilga alone. So it will be Creep Wave getting a kill, but it is just the support Naga Sire and everybody else is able to make it out. They lost their tower. They got to make sure to grab their outpost. Okay, they ping it right away. They are aware of it to be able to clean that one up. And now they do have Amara with a blink dagger. So easier ways for him to get on top of targets and easier ways for him to play. Maybe do some fun stuff with that uh, versus that Song of the Sirens. Since it's only level one, the AoE isn't the biggest. They'll see Smashers postured in the area around here. But they want the next outpost pretty badly. Without the sleep, it's, it's quite scary. Still got the threat of the black hole, but as long as Creep Wave have a few of them around it. Although the Creep Wave have completely left this area, so there they is have. still there. Just under a minute. Uh, there's definitely a high chance that Hubble Smashers will get back in and get that post back. Especially if they see any information here. The illusion is going to start scouting. It sees Mars, it sees Lich, it sees everything. So they see three heroes at least bottom. And now we'll probably see Ace step forward and look for Start taking that outpost soon. She mid. Nice boundless into the arrow. And also Wukong's command being committed by Crystalic. Okay. 
Maybe a little overkill there, but they do get the kill. But 100 seconds, no Wukong. All these things matter. Like they're, they're even gonna, just gonna run into the Roche pit without Wukongs. Fresh, D, uh, fresh BKB on Ace. No confidence around this area. They're gonna kill it quick. This doesn't look like replay is expected at all. They didn't turn the outpost back though. Well, uh, missed, missed opportunity there. As they, I mean, may, maybe Storm Storm will be quick to take it out. They, they might have the time to get out after this rush and pick it up. This is definitely, this is way more valuable. Sure, but they could have done time. Yeah, they always hate to go. Oh, no, they, they don't care. I mean, I sure, I guess 20 minute outpost is not too big. No, when you have, you have ages storm. But well, they're not even going to have their own. Now, now, now oh, you kind of wanted the other, you know what I mean? Now you got none of them. Definitely missed opportunity there. Nice by Creepwake. Yeah. yeah, good moves from them to, to get that tier 2 in time. Storm Stormer with the DD now in his bottle. Just what the We're on the ult across, Alex. Ooh. Got a fish with an arrow. Just, he just takes out the catapult, actually, to stop, to slow down that push. He's actually arrowed also the uh, Necro book in the last team fight. He arrowed, he aimed for the Necro 3 to take out the vision, which is kind of a cool approach. For the twins. Still, uh, yeah, 2k lead here for, for Creep Wave, to, despite Hellbear Smashes being the ones to secure the Roshan. Yeah, still very, very close game. It's going to be a lot about how these fights are dictated and who gets those big ults down and if they're able to if smash it, they're going to be the way. Ace, chilling up top, still has his BKB at the ready. Oh, right on, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he's going to have to pop it immediately. He's going to turn with the rope, John, so I'm on. Double immediately well, starts to TP. He'll cancel the TP now, maybe thinking that there's a... A chance for them to turn this fight around. Stormstormer. And now Crystalis. He, he commits all his mana to get it onto Crystalis. He's not got quite enough to continue chasing him. As Crystalis, he's out of the trees. Song will be used. And into the hammer. They've got the combo to take these two down. Ace moves over the take down fish map. Mallory in front of the BKB. Look at the Tofu, Tofu. Heading into him hard with the death ward as Tofu. He's going to get blown up by the sanities. But Mallory will lose his life there for a committing hard onto the Witch Doctor. Amar, Amar got greedy. They had the Boundless on the Bloodseeker. He blinks and rebukes and then throws the spear. If he just throws the spear, that's a chain stun, and they maybe have a chance to just kill him. Instead, that all gets reset the complete opposite way. His greed punishes him, for sure. Have to just you use the spear there to get the chain stun. That's now a big push is happening, and there still is a black hole threat. Even though there's no Naga Song threat, that is still gonna be a bit scary. They will hold the tower, but a comeback. We're seeing this replay again, just how close they they came to losing Crystalis as well. That would have been a really bad turn of events if that was the case. So at least able to make sure that the Monkey King doesn't go down. So he's still Maybe here. they wouldn't have had the damage anyway if he did just Insta Spear, but just he let the Bloodseeker get the BKB off. So got to be a little more careful in those situations. That was when they had their lead. That's when they had like the 2,500 gold lead, a good 4K experience advantage. Now it's back down to zero pretty Dyer's much. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Smashes, ready to hit him with the smoke. I've got the black hole from Rasmus. You going off the mid. Storm Storm immediately looking to commit. Maureen's going to try and buy some time with the Astral to protect their Lich's fish round. We'll get the ult off. And the many eyed longs to share the bounces. As the chain frost not able to do much at all. Cast won't quite bounce. Rasmus will use the book to clear out the area of any wards, which there are actually like zero wards for the side of Creep Wave, unable to get much down. Crystalis trying to desperately find and finish this BKB so that they have a good fighting fighting stance inside Dyer's those three fights. He's close. Without the BKB, Storm Storm are just able to go from every single time. Yeah, he just can pick and, t pick and choose his targets, really, besides the OD. Storm Spirit has a lot of freedom. Especially with the stages for another Dyer's about another minute. Is under attack. All grouped up, they still don't have the BKB. They, they're very close to two BKBs actually. Dyer's Mars and the Monkey King are, are getting pretty close. That'd be Dyer's pretty ideal for them to have the triple BKB team attack. fight. Kick off in the next few moments. Smashers though, Dyer's in the bottom, bottom tower, tower, still trying to control this high ground. 
And Gilgar's song is at the ready. It's only level one song. So he's got that really long cooldown, but he's about to be torn. Marine? Shot himself. Uh, it's not so bad. He's got the catch on him. BKB will come out from Maori. He's going to try and stand his ground and drop the Meteor Hour down on the storm, but BKB's up for himself. He's going to let the TP out, but he's going to come to an end. If they got anything to cancel it, they don't. There's a little window there where BKB finished. As TP had and that smash is not having anything up there to put a stop to it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That was scary. He's got 45 Radiant's seconds though. No BKB. Tough for him to actually step on fight. But Aegis does get reclaimed. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And they are smoking out. Free wave. And a war. They've got the Astral. They managed to catch Stormstormer there. Stormstormer went for a bit of a greedy TP. Ace is going to try and fight back though. Even without his Storm Spray, he's, he's trying to hit into Maureen, but the shield is keeping Maureen safe. As he can't commit further, Gilga coming across Song into the hammer. It's down on the OD. He needs a little bit of extra damage there to bring down Maureen. They've taken down Fishman. He can keep the illusions onto Maureen, but Maureen's going to turn over towards Gilga as the backups here from Crystalis and Emma. And they'll chase over towards the Nagasar and Maureen keep himself alive. Holds back the Necro Book as he'll be able to escape as Gilga causing a bit of a Making distraction space. now. Making space, but will inevitably die. As he runs into the base, he picks up his blink dagger to the Let's go. But will die in a nice hit from Creep Wave with that arrow setting up on the storm initially. And now that should be that should be their BKBs, right? At least the yeah. one on the Monkey King. And actually yeah, Mars. So three BKBs gonna be finished into this this Naga sleep. That's gonna be really useful for them in this next fight. Smiles Radiant are scanning. BKBs are going to make it make it pretty impossible for, for Hellbent Smashers to, to kill them whilst they're up. They don't have in an easy amount of a physical to go through. Now, of course, it's right near build. It's all about, well, not all, but a large part of it down to the magic output. The black hole will be like the most damage now. With the midnight close from the black hole inside yeah. those BKBs will be the most damage. It's, it's triple BKB on both cores. So the team fights are gonna get a little weird for sure, as you're gonna see people probably just walk away with these uh just being golden. And maybe we see some more poking and prodding from these teams just to force the BKB. So like an astral into an arrow, force the BKB reset, then come back in to look for an opportunity. It's just gonna be a lot of baiting. Because if a head-on engagement just straight kicks off, it's just I think heroes are just going to walk away, or it's going to be Helper Smashers getting a good black hole. It's going to be disastrous. I've nearly got the to do that. Oh, um, Rasmus goes out of the BKB, just a, a couple hundred gold, and we will have that blink. So the setup between him and, and Gilgas Nagasar, and it's, it's certainly going to be there in these fights. His creep wave are going to be having have to be very careful ward. with their positioning. Ward and Sentry on high ground. They see all of creep wave right now. Rasmus is sitting on the side, Stormstormer goes in. Instantly tries to put the quick kill off to Fishman, but an Astral's out to hold back the Stormstorm, and they'll have to the glide in the end of the game. So they'll have to win that Fishman. Christmas is trying to turn with the BKP, but as you say, Rasmus, he's got nothing else to offer now. He's got to be very careful as there's the hammer's out of the two of them, but again, Maori, another Astral keeping the squishier heroes protected. Alex tries to jump off the side, but Rasmus and Tofu, they're looking to chase him. Alex turns with the arrow. Alex still alive here over in the river. They couldn't quite reach over towards Christmas. And Gilga has to pop the song. they go for the TPI. He's not going to make it. Christmas reaches in, takes him out with a boundless strike, and Rasmus, he He's also going to go down as Creep Wave, a solid fight there, as it it, it, it all just, it, it happened too quickly for Hellbears, and, and what happened with the Black Hole Fog? He just, he absolutely whiffed everybody. He tried to catch the Monkey King on the side of it when he was running into his Wukong, he just missed. He literally just cast it on the right side of the fight, and missed everybody, and then it's a disaster. They're all completely split up on the side of the Hellbears Meshers, and they're the ones with the Ward and Sentry advantage. They saw the whole fight, and they just... They just missed the bottom of the dog there. Yeah, Creep Wave just... Creep Wave. I'm just doing an, an excellent job of, of, of the way that they sort of split attack. up and make it very hard for Hellbear Smashers to actually commit to get a kill. I mean, Maorin with these Astrals and then Crystalis just sort of taking them for a, a run all around the fight. Just here, start off again Radiance here. Top tower has fallen. Stormstormer burned like almost all of his mana too when he jumped in and we're seeing here on the right side black hole just whips crystalis he just walks back in he was maledicted too so very likely that he just dies if he gets hit by that at all as there's no way to cancel it 
So, big whiff there by Misery. I mean, you're right. that was... Honestly, it w when it happened in the actual fight, that was so far off, I didn't even see it. You know, I was like, yeah. when you said it, I was like, wait, there was a black hole? And did it get cancelled immediately? I mean, it, it didn't. It just, it wasn't there. It was... It was miles away. I mean, I, I, I guess what Rasmus's intention to try and catch Crystalis before he sweeped over, but couldn't quite clip him. I think he was just really scared of the Wukongs, like he was going to die, but he has BKB and it's a Maelstrom Wukong, so sure the damage will do that, but you won't just instantly die or anything like that. They also had picked up neutral items, I believe, right before that fight kicked off from their Ancients. Well, I think on the side of Hellblade Smashers, their neutral items were at base. Now we see uh, Rasmus, he has a Quickening Charm, so he has better cooldown reduction for the next few moments of his hopefully not whiffed Black Holes for his team. He just has to be a little bit more uh, more confident. That's two times now that he's been a little hesitant and has messed up with those black holes. And who, who, who is sort of he, the, the target for him? Who, who's popping the, the BKB blink, black hole, uh, and, and committing it on? Is, is it just this Monkey King that's the sort of the main damage output you're looking to control? Mostly the Monkey King, yeah. Either one, though. The OD or the Monkey King are decent yeah. targets. But I'd say, yeah, Crystals. Especially if they can get Maledicts off. Any of these targets that get Maledict, if they get BKB black hole, they're, they're going to die from that Maledict pick. So we'll see it again, kicking off here. I mean, yeah, they've got Black Hole ready to go. It's, it's back. The Smoke, looking to see if they can get some sort of setup around mid. That's full Scardy now done on Crystalis. Got the Rupture down onto Alex. The rupture nice, here. might start with a pretty dead Mirana. We're going to see Storm that try and poke a reaction out of Ammar. The song's in play from Gilga. They're looking for a target. Who, who do they want to make the jump on? They'll, they'll kill off Alex. Hammer out to Fishman from the side as. Nice. Way underneath and there's the black hole. The Blaster Piano goes down the two of them. It comes out. RPH has already been used. So there's no further way to break the teammates. As Chrysalis is falling low. He's put the BKB, but he will go down. They get the Monkey King. Ammar might be able to come in with the cleanup though, as they've lost three on Albert Smashes. They're going to lose Rasmus here as well as Ammar gets the double kill. I mean, the, the, the black hole, it, it, they get what they wanted to catch. It, it didn't matter, though. The, the cleanup's still there for Creep Wave. I mean, they're, they're at a lead now that, you know, you, you may have caught the Monkey King, but the two other cores, they, they kind of hurt. And especially Yama just crunching through everyone here you know, with the damage that he has to offer with that Ghost Rebuke and a whole lot of money. I mean, the, the Bash is straight up done. I mean, he's close to, to even having money to finish off the Abyssal. He's level 24. Look at his, look at his level. Three levels from that fight yeah. with this aura destruction. I, he actually was dealing a crazy amount of damage. He got ignored. He was able to get absolutely everything off there, and it was just the midnight pulse that was ticking on them at the end there. It's OD and Mars with good positioning. Maybe a little bit too much focus from Smashers to catch the two supports, as I saw them put up a lot of attention on the Lich and the Moran at the start, and they're just full committing on the Monkey King. These two just got everything off. 5k gold lead now, and a big experience swing. 15,000 experience now for Creep Wave Advantage. I feel, feel a little bit of damage issues on the Smasher side. These BKBs are a problem. I'm seeing now Ace is queuing up the Shard, which will be really nice for him to have this percent base and pure damage. And it really feels like they need it. That damage just felt really lackluster after the Black Hall was done. Gilga. Oh. He's, uh, he might get a bit of a rude awakening if they come searching in the pit. They're actually going to step right past it as they're looking to make moves over towards Tofu's. Tofu's down. Holy. And ooh, not quite able to catch Gilga there. Quick reaction with the blink. Maureen is trying to chase, though. But they're starting the Roshan. They kill it really fast. Amar and Gilga are just going to be able to just two-man this. Oh, they found him. He was trying to find his way out of here, but they've got him. Astral ends the arrow. Gilga down. And as you say, no trouble taking out Rosh with these two heroes. Whatsoever. Oh, they do so much damage between the two of them, and they can tank it for forever. Aegis and Cheese picked up. And as you had mentioned before, you know, these Abyssals, double Abyssal is going to be coming online soon. This BKB Black Hole is not going to be nearly as threatening when they just have easy ways it's... to be able to stop it. This game is starting to get pretty hard for the Smashers. Rasmus. Whoa. 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 Uh oh. He knew he was there. I mean, I'd, how, how did he get the vision? Was it during the leap, do you think? There, there was, he, he passed by at an angle? It yeah, must, yeah. must have been. Oh, wow. I mean, that, that, he's dead for 55. He's not that buyback back here, Rasmus. He's not going to be around for this defense. Radiant middle tower is under attack. He's dead. Oh, he's straight and he fell. Oh, he gets tripped up by the lowest. Oh, my. I mean, 
and that's the mid Rex at least. That little Lotus play there from Alex. Stormstormer was not ready for it. I mean, they know. Stormstormer's not got a buyback. Neither is Rasmus. Gonna be up to the three of them. They do have a song, so maybe in the buy time until Rasmus is back up. I said that though, Gilga, he's outside of the base. He's gonna have to get over it. They're losing the tier fours. The ages is gonna die. This is through back door. They're gonna have the song to delay it. But the monkeys keep spawning. Let's see what they've got here. Hammer. Down on the two of them. They're gonna have black hole up in a second. It's gonna be a big black hole, hole from Rasmus. He's struggled to find it. As uh -oh. he's dead. He's actually just dead. As that probably will be that. As Rasmus out for a minute. Abar just breaks down Tofu. They're giving a little bit of respect to Ace. The sum of R on the low. As Ace is running around. He's got no BKB, no Gleipnir ready to use. They're both on cooldown. He's going to turn with the Blood Rhyme. But Chrysalis is just ending the game. Game simply. There we have it. Goes to, goes to Creep Wave. As, I mean, they, they, they really did just outplay Hellbear Smashers pretty heavily in the, the second part of that.